We arrived in Iceland yesterday on the Smiral Line ferry from the Faroe Islands. After spending a night in Seyðisfjörðu, we've come this morning to Egilstadir, collected the rental car, and over the course of the next week, we're going to take the Northern Ring Road all the way to Reykjavik, stopping off at some of the world's most incredible natural wonders. It's going to be one hell of a road trip. Egilstadir is the largest town in eastern Iceland, with a population of, wait for it, 2,500. There aren't too many dining options here, but where better to start a road trip than at an American diner? So far, the Ring Road experience has lived up to all expectations. We started off in what you might call Scottish weather and Scottish landscapes, but then abruptly the sun came out and we found ourselves in what could be central Nevada or Arizona. In a few miles time, we're gonna take a right turning off the Ring Road and head to somewhere I've wanted to go for many years, Detifoss. start to hear the thunder. Detifoss, the most powerful waterfall in Europe. Now at the beginning of September it's way off its peak flow but it's still absolutely spectacular. Any words for me Serena? Wonderment. Awe-inspiring. Contrasting with the frightening power of Detifoss, a short walk upstream brings you to the smaller but no less dramatic Selfoss. Wow, look at this weather, and things are about to get a lot hotter. The steaming vents are utterly spectacular, but the smell is like something between a stink bomb and a Glastonbury Festival toilet disaster. The area around Lake Mivatten is a hotspot for geothermal activity and accordingly this is the tourist epicentre for Northern Iceland. The lake itself is very scenic but, and this is a big but, Lake Mivatten in Icelandic means Lake of the Midges. Wow, <laughs> got some great shots but I'm being eaten alive by midges. Me too, can we go? Oh yeah. Wow, this is our base for the next two nights. Hey, my name is Ingo. Welcome to Vatlakot Farm Guesthouse. We are located in the middle of the Diamond Circle, um, close to Mivat, Datifoss, Ausbirki and Husavik. Yeah, welcome. <laughs> and who's this? This is Vivian. Vivian Magna. <laughs> she the boss. She's the boss. <laughs> there are times on the ring road when you need to leave the car behind and relax. And with all this incredible geothermal activity in the area, it would be criminal not to take the waters. That has to be one of Iceland's top experiences. Well, I don't know if you can see just how bright it is here, but we are having some kind of an Indian summer here in Iceland at the moment. The Icelanders are like, wow, they can't believe it. They've had a very wet summer thus far, so 
this is incredible. And being in the baths here has just been something else. I mean, it's like being in the Mediterranean, but you've got these amazing Icelandic views. It's been really, really special. It's amazing how sitting in a hot pool for two hours gives you a ravenous appetite. The sound of the Earth's core. It's like a jet engine. Another day, another gorgeous waterfall. Situated right on the ring road, this is Gothafoss. This morning we've taken a detour from the ring road to drive north to the pretty coastal town of Husavik, just below the Arctic Circle. Now it's known in Iceland as the whale capital. We've only got time for a short visit today, so we won't be going whale watching, but we do have time for the famous whale museum. Most exciting use of a QR code I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, so I've just got this uh, QR code up and it's a humpback whale song, this one. There's no getting away from the fact that Iceland is a very expensive country, so from time to time self-catering is definitely the way to go. And who wouldn't want to have a picnic in a place like this? We've made it to Akureyri, Iceland's second city. Around 15,000 people, so absolutely enormous by Icelandic standards. Akureyri grew in the 19th century as a trading post where local Icelandic farmers could do business with Danish merchants. To make sure that they got the best deal, they formed a cooperative called KEA, and that cooperative was very successful indeed, such that today it owns nearly every business in town. Now you might think that maintaining lush botanical gardens this close to the Arctic Circle would be impossible. Well, Iceland is full of surprises. A fun Saturday morning's training for the local fire brigade. If you've been to Reykjavik and visited the cathedral and also the famous Halgrimskirke, then you might recognise Akureyri's church. They were all designed by the same person, Gudjon Samuelsson, Iceland's state architect in the 1940s. Now it's obviously a lot smaller than its more imposing cousin in Reykjavik, but at night, with the spotlights on, it dominates the town. Traffic lights that give you the love. Ah, oh, goodbye Akureyri, hope to see you again soon. We were just driving out of Akureyri and couldn't understand why everyone was stopping their cars and getting out with their cameras. Well, the answer's over there. Whales. Wow. That was a close encounter that I will remember for the rest of my life. Well, that sunny weather was never going to last, was it? This is much more like Icelandic weather. Right, coffee is needed. Do 
remember that lovely picnic from yesterday? Well, it's now dropped to five degrees. There's a wing from the Arctic, so the picnic is in the car. It's been a long day of driving so far through thick fog and some heavy rain, but we've made it to Borgarnes for a quick refreshment stop before heading off the ring road for one final hour of driving till we get to our destination of Stickisholmö. Definitely a detour from the ring road that's well worth taking. This is Stickisholmö a fishing village on the north coast of the Snaefell Peninsula. We'll be staying here for a couple of days and I'm making a separate film, so watch that later, because this is a film about the Ring Road. So enjoy a short drive along the Snaefell Peninsula, which is spectacular, and then we're back to the Ring Road and on to Reykjavik. Just outside Borgarnes, there's a historical site that's close to the heart of all Icelanders. If you've read any of the Icelandic sagas, then you'll have heard of Skala Grimmer. He was one of the original settlers, and this was his farmstead. It's called Borg or Mirum, which means Rock of the Bogs. As the traffic builds, we know that inevitably we have come to the end of our northern ring road trip as we reach Iceland's stylish and energetic capital, Reykjavik. It's been a thrilling road trip. The northwest is less dramatic unless you make a detour to either the West Fjords or to Snæfellsnes, as we did, but the northeast section is quite remarkable. At times I thought I was driving in the Scottish Highlands, then Shetland and then deepest Nevada, and at times even the Australian outback. The landscape truly takes your breath away. But we're moving on, our next stop is Greenland. So keep exploring, stay on the channel, and make sure to subscribe. <laughs>